reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, the disciples of John came to Jesus, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. And no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch tears away from the garment, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins. If it is, the skins burst, and the wine is spilt, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome once again to Chilworth Abbey. In the gospel we've just heard, Jesus identifies himself as the bridegroom. And yet, he remains celibate. The psalmist speaks to us of the Jewish ideal of the family with lots of children. In the psalm, your wife like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house, your children like shoots of the olive around your table. But Jesus rejects this in his life, and yet he says he is the bridegroom. So if he is celibate on earth, he must be thinking of a heavenly marriage. And that marriage is the marriage which, which sacred scripture tells us will come at the culmination of all things when the Lamb of God will marry the church, the new Jerusalem. Scripture begins with a marriage and ends with a marriage. It begins with Adam and Eve, and Adam saying of Eve, at last, this is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. And they become two in one flesh. The same will happen at the end of time when the Lamb of God will look upon us and see a bride prepared and ready for her husband without spot or wrinkle. And with him, we, the church, will become one. But the nuptial union of heaven is already happening now in us who have eyes to see. Yes, the bridegroom has been taken away from us into heaven. He has ascended, but his parting words were, I am with you always until the end of time. He is with us, according to today's gospel, to the extent that we fast. He's been taken away, so we fast. And by fasting he means not only abstinence from food, in penance, but living seriously, self denial, rather than its opposite, self-indulgence. We live in a society which is becoming increasingly, increasingly darkened 
by the exaltation of the self, the pursuit of self-fulfillment. What room is there in a person for Christ when that person only indulges himself or herself? Self-indulgence may satisfy that person for a time, but then they realise how lonely and isolating it is to live like that. We all know deep down that such a way of living denies how we have been created. Adam, we repeat, said, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And Adam knew that he was called to union with Eve and each of us is made to reach out in self-giving love to everyone. A love, this love I'm talking about, goes far beyond the romantic love that we hear about day in, day out as the ideal. But the reality of that romantic love, if left to itself, is inevitably tragic. Just think about all the characters in fiction where the love ends in tragedy. Cathy and Heathcliff in Wuthering Heights is just one example of so many romantic attachments that become, in Christian terms or in religious terms, marriages but those marriages fail because they never drew on the essential bond of love that makes a marriage eternal. And that bond of love is God himself. The old adage, good marriages have three people in them, the husband, the wife, and God. And so many fail to make that connection even though they might have gone through a sacramental marriage, do they really know? Were they really taught? Because human love without God peters out into self-indulgence. So to be a Christian is to be one who denies himself in order to be born again into the life of Christ. The Son of Man will be taken away from them and then they will fast. And this fasting begins with our baptism when that sacrament empowers me and you and also teaches me and you how I will live this life in this world. And it will be life in union with God. I am with you always until the end of time. We accept Jesus' promise. In order to be made into a person who is ready and able to participate in heaven, in the divine Trinitarian life, which is self-giving love. Each moment after my baptism is putting into practice that sacrament in its power by dying to myself in order to rise into the life of Christ, which is called the Paschal Mystery. Dying and rising, dying and rising into Christ, into the new life of Christ. We are reborn, born again in this way. And it is Christ the Bridegroom living in the Christian and whether you're male or female, you are his bride. Making that Christian fruitful through love. Marriage between two Christians, male and female, is an example of how Christ works in each individual Christian. He penetrates us with his word 
feeds us with his body and blood so that slowly, slowly, with St. Paul, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Today, now is the time to begin, if we have not already begun, and I'm sure most of us here have, to die to myself so that Christ can live and move and breathe within us, so that he has room to live in me, so that sin has no chance to root itself in us. And in this way we will know the love of Christ. As St Paul talks about its height and depth. So to be filled with the utter fullness of God himself. That is our life now and we're not even in heaven yet. This is the joy of our Christian life. Mary, conceived without sin, spouse of the Holy Spirit, pray for us so that Christ too may live in us as he lives in you, so that it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Mm -hmm.